The Leucopternus is a vulture, but instead of the bald head of most vultures, its head is much more graceful. Adults have white feathers, although the youngsters' feathers are black. They become whiter with age. The Bidayat claim that a very white bird is a hundred years old, which is why when blessing children they say, May God grant you the age of a vulture. <laughs> Ingai decides to leave. He's promised to take Abderrahim to a wonderful canyon with lush vegetation. It's one of the secrets the old camel driver must pass on down to his grandson. Nomads can pick up and leave a place in a matter of minutes. All the equipment they need for the journey is stored in the mala mala, large leather sacks cut from the stomach of a camel. Another vital accessory for the nomads is the basur, the camel's saddle, carved from acacia wood. It's placed on top of blankets, which makes it more comfortable. The crocodiles put me on the right trail. There must exist, somewhere in the Anadai, remains of the forests which once covered the Sahara. I talk it over with my guides. One of them knows a mountain with a paradise-like oasis at the summit. I give the order to leave. August 12th. After several days of walking in suffocating heat, I wonder if I wasn't dreaming. In front of me is a monumental arch as high as a 30-story building. This stone cathedral, however, was not made by man, but by nature. 
Perhaps it's the gate into the Garden of Eden that I've been looking for. At the foot of Mount Aloba, Ingai has spotted a small cluster of acacias. At midday, when it's hot, the shade is really a blessing. It's the ideal place to take a break and give the animals some rest. Ingai tells his grandson that high up on Mount Aloba, there is still a small oasis hidden in a deep crevasse. There's a spring, palm trees, and they say that life is good there. However, nobody dares try to climb up. The mountain is sacred, and those who have ventured up have never come back down. The vultures are there, gliding along the dizzying cliffs. Can they see the mysterious palm grove from up above? I have to find out if it's real or a legend, and to do so, I must try to climb up. After days of looking longingly at Mount Aloba, I decide to go into action. I try climbing up, but I barely reach the halfway mark when I find myself face to face with a vertical, insurmountable wall. I have to retreat, but I won't give up. I'll make it, no matter how long it takes. After days of searching for a trail in the middle of the 400 meter high rock face, I'm about to give up on ever seeing this inaccessible oasis. When suddenly, I see a long gutter leading to the summit. I set up camp at the foot of the cliff. The next day, nothing can stop me, and I finally set foot on the plateau atop Mount Aloba. Religiously, I tread on the soil which perhaps nobody has treaded on before. I look in vain for the palm grove. Without a doubt, Mount Aloba is the realm of rocks and steep rock faces. There's no place for springs, enchanting valleys, or palm trees. The summit is invisible, drowned in a blanket of fog. I feel far from the Sahara. I'm discouraged, but my guide reassures me. He says he knows real forests hidden in the heart of the Enadai Massif. <laughs> 